It is Earth Day, the 50th anniversary of the first Earth Day. And to talk about how COVID-19 is showing us what the world could be like when we cut back a little bit, we want to welcome Monica Medina, our Daily Planet founder and publisher, also former NOAA, NOAA, that's the uh, federal government office, general counsel. Good to have you here. We saw the pictures from India, for instance. They can now see the Himalayas from some cities in India for the first time in decades. But even NASA has pictures of what's happening in our cities as fewer of us drive and the smog clear. So what are the long-term lessons for us? Well, I think there are lots of long-term lessons and thank you so much for having me and happy Earth Day. Um, it's nice to get to talk about these issues because we have learned a lot from the COVID um, tragedy and it is, it is terrible and it's not the way we would have wanted to learn these lessons, but we can learn them. First, we learned that we need to work together both um, nationally and across the globe. These global problems need global solutions and we can't solve them on our own. We learned that preparation really matters. We've talked a lot about bending the curve on the COVID virus. We need to bend the hockey stick when it comes to climate change. We've also learned that people love the outdoors. When you're stuck indoors, you really get to appreciate how much the natural world and our environment means to us. And we can see the mountains in LA. We can see the sky in Boston and New York. And I think now we know how much pollution we were really experiencing before this. But Monica, cars are going to come back. And, and, and I'm unconvinced that there's going to be any sort of policy change. In fact, um, the policy changes that have been happening during this pandemic have gone in the opposite direction when it comes to the environment. We've seen the administration roll back some of the curbs on emissions and on coal-fired plants, for example. So uh, what? how worried are you about that? I am very concerned about that. That is a terrible tragedy, and it's actually exacerbating the impacts of the virus because it's the people who are hurting are the ones whose um, lungs have been compromised by air pollution. So we really need to take that lesson and change. We do need to change, but I'm firmly convinced that we can rebuild our economy around a cleaner, more efficient, and a much better environment. And we can take the opportunity that this provides to rebuild our, our infrastructure in a way that protects clean air, clean water, that makes it more livable for us all. We don't have to choose between economic growth and prosperity and the environment. We can do both. Unfortunately, this administration doesn't believe that and has taken us in exactly the wrong direction at the worst possible moment. Monica, we've seen a huge decline in emissions, but I'm wondering how much of an increase we've seen on waste. I mean, it seems like we're consuming more single uh, plastic, um, single use plastic. I'm seeing Amazon boxes piling up outside my building. We're seeing delivery boxes. I mean, is there more waste consumed here? Is that kind of the other side of what's happening with the coronavirus? I think it's too soon to tell how much more, but yes, clearly we are having to depend on new ways to obtain the goods that we need um, in order to continue to, to subsist during this um, pandemic. But if anything, it is making us more aware of these issues. Again, it's the awareness that we have now that can help us to change what we are doing in order to make ourselves more sustainable. Sustainability doesn't mean we have to go without, but it does mean we need to change some things in order to make ourselves uh, able to um, go on without so much plastic, without so much cardboard. We, we can do these things. We know it. And now we can see it. And that's half the battle to making change. Monica, it's Julia LaRoche. And, and I think you're right when it comes to awareness. I was literally having this conversation with my husband when we were walking our dog yesterday about how clean the air smelled, at least. Um, I guess on an individual level, what is the one thing that we could all do as individuals that would have the longest term impact? It would be the most sustainable and the easiest thing to, to deploy in our everyday lives going forward. Well, I do think reducing plastic is a really important thing because, of course, plastic comes from fossil fuels. So the more we can reduce the amount of plastic we use just down to water bottles, when we think about the billions and billions of plastic water bottles that people consume every year, when you could be carrying a reusable bottle, that's one easy thing that everyone can do. Another thing we can do is turn off lights and conserve water. These are precious resources that we're using in order to fuel our, our um, economy to keep the lights on. And the more we can reduce our load and become more efficient, the better off we will all be. 
Monica Medina is our Daily Planet founder and publisher. We appreciate your joining us here on Yahoo Finance on the 50th anniversary of the first Earth Day and a happy Earth Day to you. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.